Hey, hey, Blue Table fans! Today we are taking a look at a mountain dragon by Creature Caster, which I painted up last night. A very, very basic paint job. I'm doing one each of the chromatic dragons for Dungeons and Dragons, which is white, black, green, blue, and red. And are those incidentally the colors for Magic the Gathering? I think they are. Anyway, so the trick with a white dragon is you can't make it just straight up pure white. And I also didn't want to make it where you could really see a lot of blue on it. And I can't stress enough what a basic paint job this is. I mean, I really, uh, I put on, I put on a lot of layers and there, there's some subtlety on here. You got some, uh, purples, you got some greens and the rock here, which is, uh, really, really a good contrast. Like I had to make the rock just a little warmer. Now the temptation sense, white dragons layer in snowy climbs. The temptation was to, uh, to make him like to put snow on the at least at the very least the base and Frankly, I really just didn't want to do that and I think I think the model is definitely Better for it. So anyway a uh, little bits of hints of purple in there pale blue grays dark blues uh, There's almost a greenish tinge to it, but there's no greens in there now the mountain dragon has this armor on him and of course, in the game world, I have to think of, well, why does he have armor? You know, this sort of feral, wild, bestial creature that lairs in the mountains. And the game background for my game is that he, uh, he was beaten and had a big chunk taken out of his back. Uh, lot, the horn's all broken off, this big old gash there. Which, of course, for a dragon is an embarrassing mark of, of defeat and weakness. So he had some uh, human blacksmiths forge him this armor, and they've strapped it on, and it's kind of just, uh, you know, sort of melded into his body in some ways. I, I made sure the straps didn't show up uh, very, very prominently. Uh, now, you notice I have this little barbarian here. That's just for scale. Uh, this, oh, whoa, that was like out of focus the whole time. I'm sorry, guys. There we go. That's better. So anyway, I had this barbarian there for scale. And, uh, and by the way, they, Creature Caster sent me two mountain dragons, uh, but the second one didn't have horns, and actually the horns don't quite line up. I think I'm going to break this one off and, and realign it. And, I mean, it looks great from the front. It all makes sense. Has sort of this devilish appearance. Uh, but those are just plastics that I had on hand. So they sent, they sent me a bonus mountain dragon, but uh, with, without the horns. Uh, let's take a look at his face. You've got some different colors in here. I actually made his eye like a, a pale turquoise and the tongue a very pale purpley color. So guys, there you have it. This is a my take on the mountain dragon, which I decided to make a white dragon because that's sort of the most, uh, the most feral of all the chromatic dragons. And I already have a green dragon, which you've seen before. I have that black dragon, which I'm going to be working on, which of course leaves uh, red and blue as the ones I don't have yet. And uh, j I'm just going to pick them from different ranges. So the green dragon is from Games Workshop. The black dragon is from McFarlane. This white dragon is from Creature Caster. And I'm probably going to get the red dragon from Mears Miniatures. And uh, I'm really excited to, uh, to show you the end result. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm also going to get uh, Mal Drakkar, which is like a Tiamat type figure from uh, Reaper. And that's going to be my Reaper dragon. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks for tuning in. And I just know that you got your inspiration for the day.